Hello, my name is Enrique Borreda. I'm the director of the European Spinology Tutorium here in Valencia, Spain. And this is a video to, uh, for you to get more information about the Spinology course that will take place or will start in Ireland probably by the end of July or maybe beginning of August, not that much longer, okay? Uh, most of you know exactly what Spinology because you are already Spinologist practice members or you have had your spine checked before or you know somebody who attends a Spinology uh, center in Ireland. Ireland is like Spain, it's, the, it's a country in which Spinology is well known because the first Spinologists came from Philadelphia like me back in 1981 and started practicing there. So. It's normal that you have heard about Spinology before. But anyway, there might be some people that never heard about Spinology or they think that Spinology is something similar to another profession that have to do something with the spine. I would like to clarify first what Spinology is and then we'll go into the subjects of the training program one after the other in order for you to get as much information about the course as possible. So. What's Spinology? Spinology is a vitalistic profession that is committed to help people express the best of themselves or to express the maximum of their potential. How do we do that? We do that working on the spine, locating, analyzing and helping the body in correcting spinal occlusions. What is a spinal occlusion? A spinal occlusion is a circumstance, it is a situation in which a vertebra has lost, has lost its uh, proper or ideal or natural, what we call dynamic center, the positioning, and also has lost, therefore, uh, or as a consequence, the natural or ideal mobility. When that happens, normally, because of what this, the spine is protecting, there is a, in, an interference of the normal transmission of nerve impulses. And here we have to talk a little bit about how the body works. Just in one minute you, un you will understand it. If we are here right now, you're listening to me, I'm talking to you, it's because our body is working. We are made out of 85 to 100 billion cells, all of them working as a unit, most of them run by the brain and the spinal cord and the endocrine system, the glands. Both systems together are called now the neuroendocrine system. We have nerve impulses, which are electrical signals, chemical electrical signals, <coughs> sorry, traveling the, through the uh, nerves to the nervous tissue. And on the other hand, we have chemical substances called hormones, enzymes, that are secreted in different glands by order of the brain. And all together, what it brings to our lives is what is called, technically speaking, homeostasis, which essentially is chemical balance. And that chemical balance is the normal, natural, ideal state of a human being or any living being that has a spine and has a brain and a spinal cord. This is like preparing a meal. You know that you need all the ingredients. All the ingredients could, should be of a good quality, they should put, be put in, in, when you're cooking them, with the, the right amount, at the right time, and all together brings up a, a dish, like for instance here in Spain, a paella, or in Ireland, an Irish stew, that I tasted the other day, by, by, by the way. <laughs> and that excellent dish is uh, the result of all of the ingredients <coughs> put together, again, in the right time, in the right moment, at the right place. So this is exactly what is happening right now in our bodies. We have all these little factories called cells working all together, bringing about something called harmony. And this harmony can be easily maintained if the body works properly. And it is not easy uh, to function and perform when the body has what we call spinal occlusions, because then we have interferences in the normal transmission of the nerve impulses from the brain to the organs and vice versa. So we, spinologists, are committed to finding, locating those spinal occlusions and helping the body adjust them and bring them back the vertebra where, where they belong. 
we are not the ones who adjust, it is the body, the only one who knows exactly where this vertebra needs to go in relationship with the other ones and in relationship with the unit or the thing called the spine. We are just in a factor that intervenes in the equation that helps the body finish and solve the problem, which is a spinal occlusion. Which, by the way, many of you know that because I know you have your spines checked regular, regularly, but the spinal occlusion is not a, a pathology, it is not a disease, it is not an infirmity, it is not something that even shows symptoms. Probably occlusions are asymptomatic without symptoms for 25 to 30 years before some changes arise in your spine and they show what is called symptoms. So the question here is that we always do to the people, the new people, the new potential practice member that we have in our offices, this is the effect. I mean, we can wait 25, 15, 18 years and if the first symptoms appear and then we do something or if this makes sense to you, if this occlusion thing, you understand that that's damaging your life, your performance, your functioning, we can do something right now for you and for your family. And most of the people, people is intelligent, most of the people using their own logic decide to start having their spine checked now and not wait for the appearance of symptoms 25 or 30 years later. Because it's logical, it just makes sense. So this profession of us is logical, it makes sense. It is simple, the simple message of if a spine is not working as a unit and it has lost its integrity, chances are normally that the body is not functioning like it should be, like it is designed to function. And to have those occlusions corrected is a, a tool, one of the best tools to have your neuroendocrine system working again properly and maintaining your life in a, in a, le in a level of quality. I, I really don't know if we have other lives, but I would like you and my, myself and my family to enjoy this life that we're living at the fullest. And that doesn't happen when we have spinal occlusions. And it happens more if we are free of those spinal occlusions. Okay? So that's what we do in spinalology. And that means that we are a vitalistic profession. We are not concerned with symptoms, with diseases, we don't diagnose, we don't treat, we don't prescribe anything, we don't give a prognosis, the future of the disease will be this and that, because we are not trained as medical doctors. We don't pretend to be medical doctors. We don't get in the training program any of the subjects that the doctors need to do what I just said. What we need to study is what's coming now that we would like to explain. What we need to learn and study and comprehend with an H in the middle. I mean, make yourself, make your the concept, make yours the concept, understand it, digest it, and be part of you. What we need to do with all the subjects that are coming now is necessary to become a certified spinologist. So let's start with the program and the course content. Here you have a class with three people practicing technique in the cervicals. We'll go over that later. But the first subject that we have to go through is what is called spinology philosophy. Spinology philosophy, <coughs> it is not a decalogue of the, the Ten Commandments of what we must do. Uh, to philosophize, to, to do philosophy mainly means using your own logic, reasoning by yourself. And that's what we want you to do in, in, the, in the program, in the teaching program. And even in life, and even in your practice, think for yourself. <coughs> Everything that we are going to, to teach here in school, please give it a thought. Don't take it for granted because I say so, because somebody else in the past says so, or because it's in just on TV or on the internet. Think about it, and if that logic of yours says, wow, I buy it, that makes sense, that's philosophy. It is not studying the life of the philosopher. That's another subject that we need to clarify. So what do we study here in philosophy? We study life. And life, to study life, we need to go from all corners possible, from the inductive to the deductive reasoning. We mainly use deductive reasoning. We say there is an order in nature. Well, many people say that. 
many people, many disciplines, even religion, say there is an order in nature, different names, probably the same concept. Things don't happen by chance. Can you prove that to me? We'll try. That's what we will do in, in class. Or you may be an atheist saying, I don't believe, I don't believe in anything, and I don't care if you're an agnostic. Okay, prove it to me. Prove it to me that there is an order in nature. Prove to me that there is not an order in nature, and that's philosophy. Of course, there are some uh, principles of ours, exclusively ours, and some that are an extension or an evolution of the street chiropractic movement. Because let me tell you something that you need to know. We'll go over that in class. Spinology is an, an evolution of street chiropractic. In 1979, somebody called Dr. Regina Gold, my teacher, my mentor, my friend, who died six years ago, started a new profession called Spinology back in Philadelphia. He has been for decades one of the best chiropractors in America and in the United States, and he was the founder of the street chiropractic movement. But at the end, he decided to to show to the world, especially the, the world in chiropractic, that there could be a training program, a course, in which people could learn the specifics about the human body, have a, the foundation of a great philosophy, be good technicians, and be able to share all of that by doing um, effective communication skills. And he put together a program that I attended, I belong to the first promotion, of Spinologists back in 1979 and I came back from the States in 1981 and opened my practice here in Valencia. I ever since have been in practice. This is uh, eventually this is my desk area, my, my office. Okay, So that's philosophy. Without that philosophy we will be another profession. This is the umbrella under which everything that I'm going to tell you right now is protected, is covered. Without the umbrella, we will be a different profession. Probably treating backaches, uh, diagnosing diseases of the spine, or just helping people for pain relief and things like that, which I, of course, totally respect, but it's just different. It's not better, no worse, it is just different. We are different, okay? Okay, so the next is terminology. That's part of the philosophy subject in which we look for the terms that are not spinology terms. Each profession has its own language, if you take a look. So we have our own language. Why should we use a language that is not ours? Why should we use a language that is a medical uh, language? Because we want to please the people and we want them to understand that? No, we must somehow use the language that we use and they must somehow also get educated in this philosophy of ours. We'll talk about that in the course too. Then we have, of course, we need to know a lot about the human body. We need that specific knowledge of the living human body. But here again, we are not going to study all the organs, and we are not going to study physiology, and we are not... <laughs> somebody saying hello. <laughs> okay. And we are not going to study um, how the body works, studying biochemistry and chemical formula, we need to know the essentials, and the essentials of, of what? Of what we need to learn in order to practice safely on people's spines, okay? So we need to have a deep and specific knowledge of spinal anatomy, bones of the spine, ligaments of the spine, muscles of the spine. We need to understand the nervous system, how it works, and know a little bit deeper uh, what is, how it functions, how what's the role of the nervous system in the human body. We have also to understand what is a spinal occlusion in depth, in, th in that subject called neurodynamics of the spinal occlusion. And of course, there are some pathologies that are considered barriers to the appliance of the technique. These uh, pathologies are all listed in a manual and we go over that in class because not everybody can get checked. We say that probably 2%, 3% of the people that we attend cannot get the, sp the services of spinologists because of their state of health, because they bring in pathologies that are what they call a contraindication to any type of pressure or any type of uh, movement on, on, on the spine, okay? And of course, altogether, 
is like we say, the human body or the human organism as a unit. We try to understand how everything is interrelated and the role of the nervous system, in this case, in the brain and spinal cord, when it's functioning properly, how this unit really works the way it's designed to the work. Which, by the way, we are not designed to work so-so. We are designed to function in performance and have a performance in life always at the top. Why do we have, at the age of 40, like they say, many people have spinal problems? Why there are so many diseases that are listed now that people are suffering all over the world? Something is wrong, but not the design. The design is so well done, so well prepared, that we should live up to 125 years with no problem. Okay. Spinal dynamics is a sub subject of the human body and is the, this is the hardcore of the, of, of the subject because we need to understand how the vertebra are related, how the vertebra look like, how the vertebra move, what kind of possible movements does this deep type of joint allow, allow sorry. and also we need to understand when talking about spinal occlusions why and how a spinal occlusion of the axis for instance does this rather than that that's the atlas, that's the axis. If you don't have the knowledge and you don't understand the mechanics of the area or the dynamics of the area, there is no sense telling you how to put forces into the spine. It will just be not safe for the people. So we need to master this information. That's why you guys and girls that are going to study spinology need to build and make your own spinal dynamic manual. That's the only manual that we are going to ask you to design for, okay? The rest is just all in the platform that I'm going to talk later at the end of the, of, the, of the chat. So let's move on to the next subject, which is called technique, of course. With a nice philosophy that we have, with all the knowledge of the human body, but if we, don't, if we do nothing on somebody's spine, <laughs> everybody, everything will be so ethereal, no? But yes, we apply our hands, we have our technique. The technique of spinology is characterized by one thing especially, it is a gentle technique. It is not a manipulation. We don't force any joint beyond its range of motion. As a matter of fact, a spinal occlusion happens within the range of motion of the vertebrae. It is not at this location, or what is called here in Spain, which is not the same in chiropractic, it's a subluxation. It is not a, a fracture, it is something that happens within the normal range of motion of, of the joints. So we are talking about probably a millimeter away of the normal positioning and, and dynamics, that's all. But that's all that takes to create an unhealth, unhealthy environment around the nervous tissue, therefore provoking the nervous tissue not to function properly. And of course, creating an interference within that context is creating an interference in your life. Because the brain is trying to maintain harmony in your body and this is an obstacle, this is a handicap. So our techniques for the dorsal area, for the lumbar area, for the sacrum area and for the cervicals are very specific. We want to help the body wherever the body is demanding help. How do we know where, where there is spinal occlusions? Do we take x-rays? Do we measure things using MRI? No. Sometimes we need this information when we have people that are probably risky, what we call risky practice members, potential risky practice members, in which we have to make sure that we can touch them, but that's another thing. So we find these spinal occlusions by using a method labeled by Reggie Gold in the 1983 called vertebrail. Vertebrail is a combination of vertebra and braille. You know, blind people read all kinds of points and little knots, and they can read books just by feeling with the fingertips. We use the same. We use the fingertips to identify what the body is trying to do. And when the body is, uh, is informed, when the brain in this case is informed about, uh, about a spinal occlusion in any area of the spine, it reacts, causing what is called the stretch reflex. And this stretch reflex, you know, is a, a situation in which the the sensory nerve endings, I mean, the sensory nerves get the information to the brain saying, hey, you know what, 
I'm elongated, I'm too long, I'm staying like this and I can, don't come back to my normal length. Please help me, brain. So the brain gets the information, not always, because the spinal occlusion can damage that sensory info. But if it does, what it does all, all the time is s send a lots, lots of messages, motor impulses, to the muscle to contract, 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 in order to, probably in one of these contractions, allow the body to, uh, the muscle to, again, recuperate its flexibility and its normal state of health. And when this muscle is contracted and contracted and contracted, you know what happens, like in the gym, when you work and work out and work out, the muscle is being, the blood is being bumped into the, pumped into the muscle tissue and the muscle grows. So we find an, an even relationship between muscle not working and muscle working. This is too technical probably by now, but um, it takes time. It is the beauty of this spinology technique because by palpating and vertebrating the areas of the spine, we are capable of identifying what the body is trying to do with this vertebra that has lost its natural dynamic center and its natural or ideal mobility. Okay? We have technique from the very beginning of the course until the very last minute of the practorium because this is the, the practical application of all what we believe. This is the how we do it. Philosophy is why we do it. The human body subject is what do we have to know in order to do it. Okay? So, I invite you to discover this technique because it's one of the best that you can find. Again, I consider it one of the best. I have never used any other technique, only the one that Reggie told me, and it has been serving me for the last 38 years and a half. And when the body reacts somehow against your force, against your appliance of the little thrust that we do, and it when the body does it twice, we say, okay, see you on Thursday, if we're on Tuesday. We wait. We must respect innate body wisdom. We don't never force, we will never force, we will never work against resistance. That's the key point here in, in technique. And also, another principle in technique is quality versus quantity. Quality first, quantity is a secondary thing. Okay? Let's move on because we have another subject called professional growth and prospects. If we teach you philosophy, if we teach you the human body stuff, if we give you a, a fantastic technique and that's it, and you're ready with all this, you get all the exams and everything, you pass everything and you're ready, then we could have two options. Option A, God bless you, good luck, I hope you make it. Or option B, you know what, now that you know that, let help, let's the school help you prepare you to the real professional scenario. You need to do marketing, you need to make yourself known, you need to talk to the in public, you need to have orientations one-to-one -one with people. That's not easy in the beginning because, you know, there are many different people in, in this planet. Some people are shy. They have never worked with some in a one-to-one -one attendance with people. And others are just big mouths since they were born, <laughs> so it's, it's very easy for, for some of them. But here, what we talk in, in effective communication skills in spinology is the art, the strategies, and, the, and on how to share with practice member or potential practice member or just with people what you know about spinology. This is sharing. Sharing your knowledge, sharing your ideas, sharing your, the way you, you think and the way you practice. And we do that especially in what is called an orientation. An orientation is uh, in the context of the first visit, when somebody comes for the first time to your office and they want to get help, normally they ask you for three questions. Are you going to cure me? How long do I have to come? And number three, how much will it cost? <laughs> That's normal. That's the education that normal everybody has got all over the world. In Spain, in Ireland, in Germany, in the States, in Australia, everywhere. Okay, so when they sit with us and we listen first to them and we get all the information that we need to know as a safety factor of information, then what we do is we set aside all this information and let's, me, let's talk about spinology. Let me explain you what can I offer to you as a spinologist. Let me explain you why we do what we do. 
for you and your family. Then that's the orientation. We lead the person in a dialogue style conversation to an end which will normally result in, yes, I would like to have my spine checked now, today. I'm starting today, I bring in my family with me, probably tomorrow. <laughs> That's what happens normally after any first visit in any spinology center. Why? Because we explain with logic what spinology is all about, and we explain with logic what spinology is not about. Okay? And we have also what is called a lecture. Lectures are you know, the great chances, great opportunities to talk to, to large audiences. The more people you have in front of you to share what spinology is all about, pff, the best. So that's one of the best things, TV, radio, <laughs> and also a, an audience. It's not easy, it is not easy to talk in front of any audience. Here in the school you get trained in doing that. Here is the place where we can do the corrections and improvements and give you the positive feedback after your trial in class with everybody listening to you. This is the place where the family of students and teachers help you improve and improve and improve until you are ready. Okay? On the other hand, we have written communications. And written communications are brochures, articles. What about the, the right now the using technology, using the internet? <coughs> On Facebook, you are now listening to this and probably uh, because you click you, the YouTube channel of the school or you're in entering the Facebook fan page of the school. <laughs> okay, let's use that because right now the world is easier and uh, gets easy, easier communicated be, because of the because of sorry of all these so social networks. All right, so let's move on because there is another thing that you must also know in order to be successful, and we want you to be successful. We don't want you to be somewhere lost in, in the middle of nowhere, struggling to make a living. No, we want you to be successful. You're a professional. You're a skilled professional. And you live on this, okay? If you are a millionaire, you don't give really a, a second thought about this. You just enjoy it like we do without being millionaires. But most, in most of the cases, spinologists are people that live and depend upon what they make in their own offices. So let's talk here in the school about what is called the know-how. What is the ideal, the ideal know-how of an office? We will tell you in the school what we know it works. And we will tell you also what you shouldn't be doing because we already did in the past and we did the mistakes. So please don't repeat the mistakes because we know that that doesn't work. So let's stay on what it works. You have to look for a nice place, the ideal location, you establish your own hours, you want to work with somebody else, you have a spinalist assistant, you have your rules, you have your fee system, you have many things that need to be somehow established and be written even in, on, on paper. And then you just flow. It's easier when you're flow, when you're flowing. We spinologists or the spinology centers should be like the lighthouses in the coast. A lighthouse, one of the beauties thing that I like about lighthouses is that they have only one message, only one. It is sent always at the same time during night, during the night, with the same intensity, so that the sailors that are getting close to the coast recognize that light and they say, aha, okay, that's the lighthouse of Cork. Let's go over there because now we know that we have to go there. We are lighthouses in society. People should recognize that the Spinology Center is a special place where you can have your spine checked and enjoy much better life. That's it. They should know that you as a Spinologist are a professional, are human, you are sincere, you are honest, and you tell them always the truth. You don't make up answers if you don't know the answer. And people recognize that, recognize that a lot. So let's stay, let's be like a lighthouse, never changing things in the sense of mixing things. And you'll see how recognized and what a reputation you have or you gain during your life, professional life. Okay? I have experienced that for many years. It makes me feel very, very good. Okay? And I want, I would like you to feel that way too. 
And the last thing that I would like to talk, <coughs> sorry, about is marketing, marketing spinology. Again, here I am with Arman. Arman is <laughs> uh, the guy who helps me in online marketing. Everything is possible right now because of him. <laughs> uh, we are, I'm 61 and I belong to that generation where we were born with using the, 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 the phone on the house. <laughs> and all of, this, all of this is new for us, but I recognize how important it is. And with the help of somebody like Arman, it's easier to, to grow and bring people into your office. So marketing spinology is you have internal and external marketing. And of course, right now, one of the best things is online marketing. Okay, so we'll talk about all of that in, in class because again, we want you to be successful. We want you to start immediately with a good number of clients, practice members, and with a nice clientele, okay? So in order to put everything together and show yourself and show us, the teachers in the school, that you're capable of doing that, we have designed what is called the Practorium. This is called Practicum, the universities here in Spain. It is the, the professional application of all the knowledge and techniques gained along the course to the real work scenario. You are going to practice under supervision in the school or by accredited spinologists in their accredited spinology centers, accredited by the school, of course, because we want to see you, we would like to see you perform as a spinologist in this last phase of your training program. It lasts around two months or so. You have to look for your own clients, your own practice members. Again, you must bring your people in. Like if you just were out establishing your office in, let's say in Sligo, or uh, let's say Galway, or let's say Madrid here in Spain, you must attract people to your office. We will teach you how to do that. Now it all depends on you, your dedication, your energy, the capability of attraction, of convincing people, somehow convincing by being instrumental in using their logic. I mean, helping them use their logic and you explaining things logically. Re remember, spinology is something very easy to understand. You just have to explain it easily, okay? In this practice, when you are done, when you are done with the numbers and with the requirements and with the quality of your work, then you are entering, if you want, the professional world in spinology. You get the diploma of a certified spinologist after signing what is called the code of conduits of the code of ethics of the profession. Yes, we have our rules. We are playing poker. We are not playing bridge and poker and some other French or Spanish cards game. No, it's one, only, one thing only. And we have to know the rules and we will play the same rules. Okay, and when you are already in practice, what you are going to do is just continue your practorium uh, momentum and get your clients to your office or to wherever you want to work with them and you have already a clientele to start with. Good. This is the total amount of hours. Most of you have already all the documents that we send. If you don't, please get in touch with the school write us, give us, send us your uh, email address and we will send you all the information. Um, the course, sorry, we'll say thanks. The course starts in probably maximum two months in Ireland. Why am I saying that? Because we are using what is called B-learning and B-learning is a combination of using technology, using the internet and the on-site classes, classes where we physically are there and we need to practice technique. So you study at your own rhythm at home and you have you establish your own uh, frequency of hours every day to, to learn all the subjects. When we get together every three months, we spend five days together, full days, in which we mainly practice the technique and also where we uh, make sure that everybody masters the information about the human body, about philosophy and all the other subjects. We have exams, yes, we have exams, but we are not interested in who is the best in class, which grade do you get, no. You know how we mark the exams, ready to continue, not ready to continue, <laughs> that's it. 
because this is a, a test for you. Do I get the knowledge of what we have covered so far? Mm, no, well, I have to go over again and study. Because this is very delicate. Spinology is a very delicate profession. We work on the spine of people. We cannot say, oops, delete, go back, like in the computer. <laughs> no, we need to be real good at our work. Okay? Yes, those exams are being taken almost every on every module of classes. We have six modules of classes of five days. Meanwhile, you study at home. And at the end, in the last module of classes, you have the, what is called the final exam. Final exam contemplates the whole course. Okay? Don't get scared with that because we are going to cover all the steps one after the other. You're going to have all the exams one after the other. So when you arrive to the end, you know almost everything. And we make sure that you know it. Okay? <laughs> Good, so the course starts again in the, by the end of July and or beginning of August and we have set up a limit for registration. Why? Because we are getting students applications already. We have um, 10, Arman, so we have 10 vacants more to, to fill up the, the course. And after that, those people, the number 11, we'll just have to jump into the second promotion, uh, the second group of uh, uh, Irish classes. I mean, I, I know that this profession is vocational. You need to have that feeling of, I want to help people. And I think this is a clean profession that I can learn and I can make a living out of it. Fantastic, you're welcome. Okay? And what else? Ah, sí. <laughs> Yeah, um, and there is a, a, a date, a limit date in which you can register, and this is July the 15th. After that, um, it will be a little bit hard to get all the information from the platform, because remember, the protocol here is, you send us the admission request field on Word back to the school when we exchange emails. Number two, you have to register paying your initial payment of the options that you choose, that information is, can be sent to all of you. And once we get the information from the bank that there is money transferred by you, then we open your access to the online platform. From that very moment, you are able to go into the platform and study and learn the subjects. Subjects that we will tell you which ones you have to go through. Because for the first model of classes, those things need to be learned and probably have a first exam, a first test on how much you have you gained of information about that. And I think that's it. That's all. Mm, I'm, I know I will enjoy going back to Ireland. I love this country. I've been there teaching from 2009 until the end of 2012. And then I missed teaching there because we had to stop because the crisis also hit Ireland like in like Spain. But now things have changed and I have put together a team of professionals with me that will help you become the best panologist that you can be. I really would like to join all of you in the school. I mean, to meet up with all of you in the school, I would like you to join the school. And now it's up to you. I really would like to. All the best. See you very soon.